Rising out of the Sonoran Desert of the American Southwest stands Phoenix, Arizona, a booming metro area of commerce, residential neighborhoods, ranches, farms, and retirement communities. Lured from northern cities by the promise of sunny skies and economic opportunity, people flock to Arizona, raising the population numbers 80% since 1970. The recent growth of Phoenix and other Arizona cities is indicative of the population shifts occurring in many regions of the world towards arid climates where there is a greater demand for water, water that must be transported from distant sources. By the 1960s, overpumping of area aquifers had caused a steady drop in water tables. Earth fissures were appearing and the land near Phoenix and Tucson was settling. The city was using up more water than was available beneath Arizona sands, and the city was still growing. Water had to be imported on a large scale. A partial solution to the problem came through a concerted effort by Arizona residents and the Federal Bureau of Reclamation to tap water from the once wild Colorado River. Lake Havasu is the main holding tank of the Colorado River for the Central Arizona Project, or CAP. At Parker Dam, approximately 1,900 billion liters of water are diverted from Lake Havasu toward Phoenix every year. All of that water is immediately lifted by six 60,000 horsepower pumps, some 250 vertical meters, over a mountain at the rate of 914 cubic meters of water per second. The water next enters a tunnel at Buckskin Mountain that is 11 kilometers long and six and a half meters in diameter, large enough to drive a truck through. From there, it enters the Granite Reef Aqueduct, where it begins a journey to the southeast, a journey of some 538 kilometers. This is check structure number 19. The MP149 means we're 149 miles from the Colorado River. Ironically, CAP's ultra-modern engineering could not be achieved without incorporating a familiar function from the ancient world. Borrowing from the Roman aqueducts, the Central Arizona project employs gravity as a principal driving force for transporting water. But in this case, the CAP aqueduct is boosted every 22 and a half kilometers by a series of pumping stations which lift the water back up again, moving gradually, steadily towards its final destinations in Phoenix and Tucson. Part of the engineering marvel takes place just outside Phoenix. Here, a reversible channel allows water from Cap to be pumped up and stored in Lake Pleasance during the winter months, typically a low demand period. In the summer months, Lake Pleasance water can be sent back along the reversible channel to meet the high demands of agriculture, homes and business throughout the city. All of this activity is controlled by high-tech links to a central office, which constantly monitors the water flow and quality. To assure smooth running and prevent leakages that can waste tremendous amounts of this precious resource, CAP engineers have built into the system maintenance features that are monitored on a continual basis. Canals are screened to clear floating debris and keep the water clean. and algae-eating carp have been introduced into the system to clean the natural buildup of algae. With the federal government steadily cutting back on subsidies for water development in the region, CAP's $4 billion price tag is becoming a burden for Arizona consumers. 
But the real price of cap is far-reaching and has consequences for a much broader region politically, environmentally and socially.